Hi there, it's Alana. Happy Monday. I hope that you are safe and well and hunkered down and at peace with things. I want to kind of shift gears. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been doing interviews with people or talking about things of just like, how can we get through these next couple of weeks? How can we prepare for recession? All of this. I have an interview with Joe Solari on the Successful Writer podcast that um, if you're concerned about recessions coming, things like that, such an encouraging and informative talk. So definitely go listen to that. But I want to switch gears now and talk about how we can really shift our mentality and think about how we can really start to thrive in this sort of new normal. So as of right now, um, Alaska, where I live, <clears throat> we're in totally state mandated um, hunkered down. We're not even allowed to travel from one community to another. I know that President Trump has recently said, you know, like end of April at the very earliest um, before things are going to pick up again. I personally think it's probably going to be a couple more months than that. And so honestly, what we've got now, I feel like we're moving from, okay, we had a couple weeks where it was just like, what the heck is going on? Now we kind of know what's going on. And now we just need to like, I, I guess I'm in this process of shifting gears. And this is what I want to encourage for you today to shifting gears from let's not focus on how am I going to get through today? And let's focus on how can I make the most of what's going on right now? So really the focus of our talk is going to be on ways that we can start thinking about thriving in this sort of temporary new normal. Um, a big part of that is to hold on to hope and to reject the feeling like we've got to panic and just realize that this is all going to be okay. This is a serious thing and I don't want to downplay that, but it's going to be important for us to hold on to hope and even start looking toward the future. How do we want to establish good habits or routines or even just how do we want to tweak our mindset now so that when all of this kind of is behind us, that we are set up in a really good way to be doing really well. Okay. So a big thing again is just to not do anything out of panic. This is great advice just for your day-to-day -day life as well as for your author career. So an example of doing something just out of panic would be saying, okay, nobody's going to be buying eBooks now because we're about to go into this like horrible recession the world has never seen before. So I just need to lower all my prices to 99 cents or I need to make everything free. Things like that. Those are in general, those are panic. Now, absolutely. I think there now is a good time to be offering discounts and things like that for your readers, because it is going to be our books that get a lot of people through this time of isolation. But we don't want to make those decisions just because we think the world is ending. Because in, in our cases, the world is not going to end. It's just going to look a little bit different for the next little bit. Another example of just reacting totally out of panic is saying, okay, nobody um, is going to be buying books anymore. And so I'm not going to have any money. So I need to, um, for example, I need to publish this book without paying an editor. <laughs> not a good, not a good idea. Or I need to make my own cover as opposed to actually hiring somebody else to do your cover. Really, the world isn't ending as independent authors were actually in a way better place than a lot of other small business owners during this time. We don't have brick and mortar stores that people can no longer visit. We don't have employees that we need to worry about laying off. So we're, we're actually doing really, really well. So in that case, I think it's wise to look at ways you can cut some expenses, but don't do so to the detriment of your books. So for example, I took some of my podcasting, um, subscription things that I was paying, you know, monthly fees for, and I switched to a new platform that had lower fees, things like that, I think are, are fine and good to do, but things that are just because, oh no, I'm, I'm terrified right now. And so I'm going to release, you know, these books without having them edited or the other side of it. I've got a book, I was going to release it and now I can't because of the pandemic. I think you need to, the very first question you need to ask yourself is, is, am I making this decision out of panic? And if the answer is yes, or might be yes, I really think that you need to come up with a better idea. So that's not to say, yeah, there might be some books that it makes more sense to not launch yet. But if the only reason you're making that decision is out of panic, then it, that's not a good enough reason. 
in general, I'm going to kind of proceed with my launch plans as I had plans. Like I said, I, I took a couple weeks where I was just kind of stunned and reeling like most of us were. And now I'm getting kind of back into, you know what, people are still going to be reading books. I absolutely believe they're going to be reading more and more books. I think what we're seeing right now, and again, I'm not an economist or a political scientist or anything like that, but just the general sense I have is that we had a couple of weeks where people were very, very worried about grocery stores running out of food and, and things like that. And that hasn't happened. And so the first few weeks, I don't think many of us wanted to spend money on anything that wasn't like toilet paper or canned goods or, you know, cleaning wipes, if you could find them. But now we're looking at, okay, I know individual families are going through hardships because a lot of people have been laid off. But in general, like people who have the means to are still going to want to find books because it is an inexpensive way to escape from all this stuff going on. So that's something else to keep in mind. So I'm I'm kind of back in the, the saddle in terms of let's get books out. Let's get books launched. Let's pay for good editing and good cover design, just like we would if this wasn't a pandemic. And let's offer this as a service to our readers to help them get through a really trying time. Like I said, I'm also making some financial switches. These were things that I started even before this pandemic pandemic happened. It just kind of turned into this providential thing that I started to do a couple months ago, where basically I went to get to um, a more positive cash flow. So that basically, as opposed to spending money in April, and then at the end of April, getting my royalties and paying off those expenses, which is what I had been doing. Basically, I wanted to start April with all the money in the bank that's going to get spent in April. And I'm also really focusing on building up a bigger buffer of emergency funds, which is going to be important. Some of us are going to see dips in sales for March, but I sincerely believe that going into April and these next few months, I really, really believe that book sales are going to soar, especially if you've got books in Kindle Unlimited. That is a great time because people are still going to be reading since they're just paying that monthly fee. It's not costing them extra to read more. If you're not wide and not in Kindle Unlimited, I've got my books up on Scribd and they're offering um, a 30 day free subscription to everybody. But if you are a Scribd user yourself, you get kind of like a referral link so that you can give your readers a 60 day free trial. So I just sent out an email to all of my subscribers this morning and said, hey, you guys can get unlimited reading all of my books and most of my audiobooks are up on Scribd. You get it 60 days for free when you sign up from this link. So I think things like that, I think we're going to see more of the subscription model. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an uptick in library borrows and things like that as well. And then the last thing I want to encourage you to do is just take care of your own physical and mental health and to kind of prioritize your well-being, your family's well-being. If you're not writing right now, it's totally fine. It's going to come back. Right now, I'm really just making, keeping my family safe and healthy is priority number one. And when there's time and energy for other things like the writing, that's going to come after that. And, and that's okay. But again, looking at this more like something that's going to persist for months as opposed to weeks, it's also encouraging me to think more towards, well, how do I really want to have used this time in terms of what do I want to get done? with this time. So I hope that was some encouraging news for you. And I hope that you are settling well into this temporary new normal. And we'll talk soon.